Is this the new revolution in the smart home market? A touch display where I can install Home Assistant, Zigbee 2 MQTT, and many other things, well, so an all-in-one device. Whether this means we'll soon be throwing all our smart home servers out the window and replacing them with a device like this, you'll find out after the intro. Enjoy. Just briefly before I address the biggest criticism of this device at the end, Wyn, I want to thank my most loyal viewers for following these videos and supporting me immensely. That's why I'm displaying an Amazon gift card here. And if you're one of those who unfortunately arrived too late, then feel free to click on subscribe and help me improve the statistic a bit. I'm very grateful to each of you. And now let's continue with the video. The Link and Link ISG display, as it's called, is many things in one. On one hand, it's a smart home server, essentially a Raspberry Pi replacement, a hard drive. You can even replace the Zigbee stick with it. And last but not least, it's also a touch display. All these things are combined in this device within a seven inch casing, which somehow resembles an Android tablet. We'll get to that later. However, on the back, there's a small bump, a little extension, which initially made me wonder what it's even for, but we'll see that now. Specifically on the back, we have something like a picture frame mount. So theoretically, we can hammer a nail into the wall and then simply hang the device on it. Additionally, we have, of course, a power connection, a USB-C port, a regular USB-A port and an SD card slot. Also on the back, for whatever reason, there's a power switch. Well, if you hang the device on the wall, you probably want to keep it running all the time. Accordingly, you don't need to turn it off. And in the packaging, there's also a stand which theoretically allows you to place the device on a table and use it as a standing um, or display. Just to clarify, yes, the USB-C port can also be used to power the device directly. So theoretically, you wouldn't necessarily need this power adapter plug. You can connect to the USB port, but also additional things like a USB network adapter if you want to operate the device directly with LAN instead of Wi-Fi. So overall, it's a pretty solid device. The only thing that might be criticized are the somewhat large display borders. If you were to get a more modern tablet now, it would probably look a bit more modern. Otherwise, yes, a fundamentally solid device. And with that, I would say let's jump directly into the setup. So I set up the device and first had to create an account by following the link or downloading the app, creating an account there, and then I could log in here. After logging in, you land on this interface here. Here you first see an overview of your smart home, which you can connect directly through this app. You can therefore integrate various lights, switches, and so on directly into this linked app. You could almost see it as a kind of smart home hub, Additionally, you can also connect Home Assistant, meaning you can bring components directly into this app and you would then see them directly on the dashboard. To be honest, I would skip this app for now because it is relatively uninteresting for most of you and for me, of course. We want to focus not on the Home Assistant part here and conveniently there is a tab for add-ons on the left side. Here you can install a lot of additional applications. On the one hand, we can of course start the Home Assistant Companion app, meaning we can open the Home Assistant page on any normal tablet from site and remotely control our smart home from there. But we can also install our own oh, Home Assistant directly on it. Additionally, Hacks, the Home Assistant Community Store, is also pre-installed. After that, we can also install Zigbee 2MQTT because this rear knob has an additional Zigbee stick built in, which we can use directly. So Zigbee 2 MQTT can be installed with just one click. At the same time, an MQTT container is also launched. So you basically don't have to configure anything to start with Zigbee. One could almost say that it is one of the easiest installation methods for home system uh, Zigbee 2 MQTT and MQTT. This can be done in a few seconds. And after that, you could theoretically completely leave out the link and link app. You start the tablet, click directly on the Home Assistant companion app to make an incarnate, then connect to the integrated Home Assistant server and can control everything from there via Sigtom QTT or Home Assistant. There are also many other add-ons such as Tailscale, so you can access this tablet from anywhere in the world without any port forwarding. So fundamentally, it's a really well thought out system. Of course, I have also watched other reviews of the device and most of them are quite positive. The only thing I find a bit unfortunate is that you can indeed see in some places that this is actually an Android interface. Although I would also be interested in how they manage to run containers on an Android operating system. 
That in itself is already a really very complicated step. I checked to see if you can do it yourself. It's really not easy. The fact that they managed to do it here is really very um, cool. However, unfortunately, you can't break out of this Android system. So you on EOM are trapped in the ecosystem of in the left link and have to use their interface. Sometimes you can see in one place or another, for example, when you go into the settings, that the regular Android settings open. But you couldn't say, hey, I would like to install this or that app additionally on this Android tablet. That doesn't work. So you are limited to the apps available in this add-on store. Furthermore, or rather, because of this, you're also dependent on the add-on store. If it doesn't work, you can't install any apps. If they have, and unfortunately this is the case, uh, older versions of apps, then you cannot update them. So, for example, anyone who has Home Assistant and always waits for the latest updates, looks forward to them and wants to apply them immediately, will probably be disappointed with this. Because we are currently in the 01.2025 release of Home Assistant, which is the January release. However, this still has the um, November edition of Home Assistant and I can't update it either. All the things that are in Home Assistant itself, like in the Hack Store, can of course be updated. Um, but unfortunately, Home Assistant itself and it cannot be manually updated here. So you have to wait until Link and Link is ready to release the latest OS here. And only then can you update everything. However, I haven't figured out how this update process works since there haven't been any updates for it since I've had it here. I've also read quite a bit about the price. Many people are upset that it is indeed a somewhat more expensive device. However, if you actually compare it with the components that this device replaces, I honestly find the price quite justified. On one hand, we have a home server, um, which we might be able to snag on eBay for about 50 euros at the cheapest. Alternatively, if we were to get a new device, we would be looking at around 70, 80, or maybe even 100 euros for such a computer. Additionally, we would also need to get a hard drive or some form of storage medium. I would estimate another 20 euros for that. Then, of course, we still need a Zigbee stick, which, depending on which one you buy and whether you catch it on sale or not, can also cost around 40 euros. And then, of course, we also need the user interface, meaning a touchscreen, to control everything. Here you could, of course, also get some used old tablet from eBay. Then I would say we might be looking at an additional 50 euros. However, if we get a new one um, and it should run reasonably well, we might be looking at more like 100 euros. And I would say that's still quite affordable. So if we add this up now, we easily reach the price of this device here. Accordingly, yes, I find it justified. And regardless, you would have to watch a lot of YouTube tutorials if you're not familiar with it or read blog posts to know how to set up such a device, right? So you would have to invest a lot of time to set everything up here. And additionally, of course, you would need a, a PC to initially install Home Assistant, lots of adapters and so on and so forth. So this here is really a super easy solution to start with Home Assistant. Just plug it in and then uh, you can get started right away. However, I have saved the but for the end and I would like to start with that now and that's why I would not recommend this device at all, at least not to my viewers or people who ask me for a recommendation. Yes, that you are supporting a Chinese manufacturer here. I don't find that fundamentally bad. I shop in China myself and find it entirely feasible. However, you are completely dependent on the Chinese cloud here through which the whole thing operates. If they ever shut down their servers, this device is basically, well, a brick and you can throw it out the window because the Android on it is locked. You can't do anything with it anymore, which I find both unfortunate and not at all recommendable. Additionally, I had some fun by connecting the device not directly to my home network, but to a router that has Edgard Home on it. Here, you can actually see which calls the device makes in the background when starting up or during operation. And you can see that quite a few URLs are indeed being accessed. So the device is really sending a lot of data to China and it's unclear what exactly is being sent. To be honest, I'm not a fan of this, especially because it involves one's own home where the highest level of privacy should be maintained in my opinion. Because ideally, we control everything we do somehow through this device. So it knows everything about what we are doing. And lastly, unfortunately, you are required to have an account. When I start this device, I have to register directly with Lincoln Link and create my account there. 
So everything is linked back to my account, which I find very, very unfortunate and somewhat unnecessary. Because if we focus solely on the Home Assistant features, then um, theoretically, we could do without it, in my opinion. I understand that they want to build their own smart home ecosystem, but Home Assistant promises us an open source privacy option, which we basically, yes, immediately undermine with this device. Accordingly, anyone who somehow ignores everything after the but and says, I still want to start with my smart home, I don't care at all what happens to my data. I already have Wi-Fi lamps everywhere in the corner, which are broadcasting everywhere anyway, and yes, this thing here doesn't make much of a difference. But it's way too time consuming for me to deal with Home Assistant. I'm not interested in it. And yes, I don't need the latest version. And if the device doesn't work anymore in a year, then who cares, I'll just buy something else. I'll definitely link that for you below in the video description. For everyone else, a, I'll also link a tutorial on how you can set up Home Assistant yourself. I would highly recommend that to you. Additionally, in the video, I also show which components I would recommend to you um, if you want to use them instead of this device. And lastly, I'm of course interested in your opinion on this. Feel free to write that in the comments. What do you think about it? Would you buy it or do you see it the same way I do and would rather advise against it? If you don't want to miss any more videos about Home Assistant or such products here, then feel free to click on subscribe and help me improve this statistic. I would be very, very happy. And then I would say, see you in the next video. Until then, take care and goodbye.